Hi you guys! I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of owning and using a bitless bridle. So that this could possibly help anybody that wants to use and possibly buy a Dr. Cook's bitless bridle in the future like I did. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the cons. The first con I can really think of is the most recent one I talked about and not being able to show in the Dr. Cook's Fitless Bridal and not being able to truly compete in it without winning ribbons. And that was just unbelievable to me that people have not yet accepted that horses can be ridden and actually look really good and behave really well with no bit in their mouth and that was really disappointing and that's going to definitely cause problems if I really decide to ever show Kiss again. That's very disappointing because he loves it, he accepts it so much more than he does with a bit and hopefully I could figure out a way to be able to show without using a bit. Um, I did not attend that show that I was talking about and one of the main reasons was that yes they didn't let me show with it and also other reasons that I'm not going to get into right now and I possibly will make a story time about it in the future. This the second con that I can't think of and that I really noticed yesterday and I was meeting to discuss a while ago because it happened one other time is my horse being an x-race horse whenever he gets super super excited. Yesterday that was, it was his first time cantering in over a week because he showed up a little bit off of last week. I gave him a good week off and kind of brought him back by just walking and trotting and yesterday he was so good I allowed him to canter. And we were working on the left lead canner, which is his best canner. And there was a horse outside that was kind of running around and acting a little bit crazy, causing Kiss to kind of get distracted and act a little crazy. So we were cantering and I was starting to circle him and I noticed something flopping around. And at first I thought maybe it was just something on the arena ground. And I, then I realized it was his tongue sticking out. Like his whole tongue was out to the side of his mouth. And that terrified me. I've done it one other time. We were walking and I was making him brown. And he was super hyper that morning. And he was also sticking his tongue out extremely a lot. Like all the way out of his mouth. And it kind of makes me worried because I know that... Some race horses have the tendency to swallow the tongue because they get so excited. And like so when he started sticking out his tongue all the way out, I made him halt. I made him calm down because it was super scary and I don't like seeing his tongue like all the way out there. I don't know if it's like what he's trying to do with it. Like I don't know why it's all the way out and I just don't want him not to be able to breathe because his tongue is kind of in the way. It doesn't happen, happen that often, but when it does, I do stop him and I make him calm down a little bit. I do wish that a, the bitless bridle had some kind of thing that can keep his mouth closed. Kind of like the figure eight bridle did. Um, it kept him from chopping on the bit and obviously playing with his tongue too much. And so that's really the only downfall I can really think of when it comes to off the track thoroughbreds. And honestly, it might not be anything at all. But that's, I think those are the only two cons I can truly think of. Other than that, it's a really great bridle. So let's go ahead and talk about the pros, which I have quite a bit of pros. The first of which, it is very light. It is super light. It's not heavy at all. You can tell the huge difference from a normal bridle from the bitless bridle. Like, it is just so light. And I just can't, I can't even imagine what it feels like on Kiss. He might feel, it must feel so much better than having that heavy duty leather heavy bit you know kind of holding him down the second thing i really do like about it it is so easy to put on you literally just slip it on and fix the throat latch and voila you're done and then you're ready to go the thing i like about it is less is more definitely when it comes to my horse i don't know if any other horse would really be good with it horses that have a sensitive mouth would definitely benefit from the dr cook spitless bridle and kiss for sure has a sensitive mouth um, we think that he was ridden in a huge shank in his previous honors, not during the racehorse industry, but his previous honors really didn't know how to ride him and they were a little scared of him. And we know that he, we, he rode western and was just kind of like a trail horse. And so that's why his head's so high when he canters because he has this fear that I am going to hurt his mouth when he canters because I can't even imagine what the previous owners have done to him and it makes me so mad. Um, but we're slowly but surely getting better. He's starting to slowly learn how to round at the canner and be a little bit more cam comfortable and lower his head a little bit more. So definitely the great thing about the Dr. Dr. Cook Spitless Bridle less is more. Another pro is, is the two pressure points that the Dr. Cook 
Brit Bellis Bridal has. Um, unlike, you know, a Hackamore, which I talked about in the review, it is not just a pressure point on its nose. It does also a pressure point on top of his head. So when I ask him to round, it does not just force his nose down. It also puts his head down by adding a little bit of pressure behind the ears. So that's really great. And I hate when people ask me, or like don't even ask me and just assume that I am hurting my horse's nose by not properly wearing it correctly. Look guys, anybody that doesn't know anything about the Dr. Cook's bitless bridle has no reason to talk. Like so many people are conditioned to believe that horses must have a bit in their mouth in order to round, in order to work properly, and that is so not true. So if you don't know anything about the bitless bridle and you've never used one or ever researched one, then you have no right to talk and tell me how to ride my horse. I've had this happen to me one time, probably multiple times behind my back, but there was a case, I was in a lesson, and this girl comes into the ring and talks to my trainer. And my mind you, my trainer was being quite rude that day. A long story, up and down, really weird situation at my riding barn. And my trainer comes back out towards me and is like, so did you do your research on this bitless bridle? And I'm like, yes, I did. I, I, I told you guys, I don't really talk that much at the barn, but I told you guys, I work, I researched this bitless bridle, this specific bitless bridle, for over a year and a half. Like, I did not just go out and buy it and throw it on him and hope for the best. I searched this bridle for so long, and I was so scared to buy it because I didn't know what to expect, and I really took into consideration how to properly use it, how to put it on properly, and how not to hurt my horse and that's a big reason why I didn't choose the Hackamore is because I knew that the Hackamore just was based around the nose and that can seriously hurt your horse. A bit can seriously hurt your, hurt your horse, a Hackamore can seriously hurt your horse and I bet the Dr. Cook's bridle can somehow seriously hurt your horse if you're using it improperly. And so she comes up to me and she says, I think your bridle might be too low and I'm like, um, I did my research and I measured it three inches away from his mouth and that's where they told me to put it. I know the difference between a tender spot of his nose and the bone part. And she fills it and she's like, oh, I guess you're right. Like, I hate when people do that. I hate when horse people think that they know more than what their own owner does. I would never, ever hurt my horse. I probably love my horse more than I love myself and that says a lot about me. You know, do your research before so you can prove to people that why you bought this bridle and the good benefits about this bridle and really teach some people. I've taught multiple people at my barn about this bridle and they have been completely amazed because at first they think I'm crazy, they don't understand why I'm doing it and then when they get to talking to me and I tell them the reasons why and what the, what the bridle does, they're like, holy crap, would my horse benefit from it? And I'm like, every horse is different. Maybe your horse would, but your horse is doing real, really well on the bit, so I wouldn't consider buying it. So, I guess, I guess those are the pros and cons. Sorry for that little rant there at the end. I just kind of had to let that out. Don't ever let anyone tell you what you're doing is wrong, unless you really are doing something wrong and then accept it and move on. But if you want to buy something different like this, make sure you definitely do your research before buying it. That's a big must, because anything can obviously hurt, hurt your horse. It's all about the rider's hand and the way the rider rides. So just make sure you do your research. Prove to people that this can be a great investment if you want it to be. And not everyone needs to ride in the bitless bridle. I chose to for my reasonings, which I already talked about. hope this helped you guys a little bit more with the Dr. Cook's bitless bridle. I'm in love with it completely. I have not ridden Kiss in a bit ever since I bought it. He's been super happy. I have seen a huge change in him. He's enjoying being ridden much more and I'm enjoying riding him much more. And I'm hoping to get some more videos out soon. I'm trying my best. I'm on spring break this week. So let's hope I can get some videos and get my lazy butt up and try to film something real soon. There's more videos coming soon. Very important videos about my future projects that I would love your support on. So make sure to stick around and see that. Have a great day. Thank you guys. Bye.